Sausage Party, the film that I had the utmost hype for when I originally saw its release trailer, only to then be sat in the cinema, staring at the end credits, with the same face of discontent that my parents give me every time I see them. Proving once again that in the world of food and life, that the ever optimistic expectation is often thwarted by reality. For those of you unaware of Sausage Party, or have rightfully tried to forget about it, it's a film focused around a group of food products living in a supermarket, who all yearn for the day for when they are chosen by the gods to be taken away to a place of eternal bliss where they will spend the rest of their lives in paradise. Unfortunately, they soon realise that this isn't the case, and now have to deal with the existential crisis of knowing that everything they believed in has turned out to be a big fat lie. The gimmick of this film was that it was presented with the style of a cutesy Disney film, yet it is very much not, as we see our characters go through horrific events, and behave in naughty ways that you wouldn't expect a cute character to behave. Basically, Toy Story meets South Park meets Happy Tree Friends. The film was also written by Seth Rogen, who although these days is a bit more of a challenged individual, with his bizarre Twitter rants and his disastrous TV series Santa Inc. The position of Santa has mostly been a white man's game. Exactly, it's fucking crazy. Things have got to change. <laughs> but back in 2016, Seth had a more positive legacy writing and starring in comedic hit films such as Superbad and Pineapple Express, as well as being seen as a beacon of free speech, after his 2014 film The Interview was met with fierce backlash from the North Korean government, and was being threatened to be pulled from cinemas altogether. So naturally, at the time I was pretty hyped to see this film, and the trailer actually made it look quite promising. Seeing cute little baby carrots getting eaten alive whilst crying out for their mummy? <laughs> certainly seemed to be ticking all my boxes. Then the film released, and yeah, it was an absolute travesty. Well that was fucking dreadful. I even made an initial review on the film expressing my disappointment in it, but that review was pretty basic and my emotions were still fresh. And it wasn't until the film came up in conversation recently with friends that I heard them talking about it more positively. So I thought, maybe it was time to give it another rewatch after all these years. Now going in with more managed expectations, perhaps my opinion for the film will change, and I'll actually end up appreciating some of the aspects that I chose to ignore on my initial viewing. Besides, my old review got demonetized by YouTube, so you know what? Look, well, y'all can do it again. First up though, I think it's important to give some background context as to just why I was so hyped for this film. You see, this may surprise some of you, but I'm kind of a big fan of animation. Regardless of the style, be it 2D, stop motion, or even CGI, I love watching animated media, and I nerd the shit out on it. Even recently, over the Christmas holidays, I was sat at a family gathering, and there were some old school Disney cartoons airing on the TV. Everyone else is just sitting there being like, haha, Donald Duck funny when he get angry. And in my autistic brain, I then feel like it's a good idea to start talking about Hey, do you know that you can tell when a Disney short was made based on Donald Duck's design? Like, if he's wearing a white sailor's hat, the short was most likely made before 1940, and if he's missing his shirt buttons, it's most likely made after 1945. This is due to budget cuts in the cartoons, which meant they had to simplify his design and... And then I realise that the room has gone completely silent, and I am now being forced to use plastic cutlery when eating the Christmas dinner. But Steve, I hear you ask, what does this have to do with Sausage Party? Well you see, being an animation nerd isn't really seen as a norm amongst most people. Devoting your emotional state on sports and crying when your team loses? That's fine. Obsessing over cars and spending hundreds of pounds to give your shit little KA a roof spoiler? That's fine. Liking cartoons? What a freak! As a result, it can be very difficult to convince people to go see animated films with you, especially when the vast majority of them are aimed at younger family audiences. So there would be times where I would end up going to see them alone, surrounded in a cinema by families with young children, feeling like I should be on some kind of register. But Sausage Party was about to change all of that. 
because now I could finally ask friends if they wanted to go see an animated film with me, because this time, it was for adults. And the best part was, Sausage Party was deliberately going for the style to look like a typical children's film, with its bright colours, cartoony facial expressions, and even sporting our characters with the little white classic gloves we remember from our childhood, which, fun fact, the reason white gloves were used in classic cartoons was to make their hands stand out from their bodies which were presented in black and white. So now I could sit there and ogle over the animation, and my friends could sit there and laugh at the silly sausage guy who was using naughty words that he shouldn't be using. Perfect. And who knows, perhaps if this film did well enough, it would show film studios that there is an audience for more mature animations, so perhaps we could start seeing stuff like this become the norm. Things were beginning to look promising. Until they weren't. Before I dive in and rip this film a new one, let's talk about stuff that actually worked for it. First up, the animation for this film is actually really good. The CG is done to a high quality, the colours are very bright to give off that Disney-like feel, and the different food products have creative designs. I particularly like the honey mustard design as they use the lid to double up as a mouth. There are some really nice looking shots used in the film's opening song, with great uses of dramatic lighting, and there's one scene in the film which is meant to be a play on Saving Private Ryan, which just looks absolutely brilliant. The animation department really did carry this film, which only makes it all the more sadder, as there was allegedly a lot of mistreatment going on behind the scenes, with animators at Nitrogen Studios being forced to work overtime without any pay, and if they complained about that, they would be uncredited and blacklisted. Yeah, animators being overworked and mistreated, probably the only part of this film that still ages well today. Other aspects that work well for this film are the moments where the cute looking food characters are going through horrific situations. The kitchen scene where the foods begin to realise the true horrors as they're brutally chopped up and are eaten alive is genuinely great. The Saving Private Ryan scene that I mentioned earlier is visually awesome. Having the Oreo looking for his other biscuit half is just brilliant. This is the humour in the film that actually works and I really wish they had leaned more into this rather than the other shit that ended up plaguing it. So now, we get into the bad. Starting with, the world setting, and its severe lack of logic and consistency. Now I know I shouldn't be expecting much logic from the film that focuses around a horny sausage, but I still think you need ground rules for how the world functions. What should be and shouldn't be alive in this film isn't made very clear at all. You'd assume it's meant to just be the food items. Well, that's not the case, as we have a couple of random objects that are sentient too, such as a douche, a used condom, and even some toilet roll. But even the sentience amongst the food items isn't very clear itself. Like when it comes to a packet of crisps, it's the packet that's sentient and not the crisps themselves. So by that logic, shouldn't that mean that the packaging holding the sausages should be the one that's sentient, and not the actual sausages themselves? Even weirder though, is that we also get a moment where a sentient packet of Mentos is also containing sentient Mentos within him. So it's like, are they his unborn children? Just waiting inside in a state of slumber until being opened? Is the Mento packet even aware that he has living Mentos inside of him? God, I need to go out and touch grass. To sum up the majority of this film's humour would be food puns, stereotypes, and shock value. We'll start with the food puns. My god, these are bad, and are scattered throughout the entire film. Okay, so... Did someone say queso? I'm fucking stretching, you know it, queso! Now that I think food puns in themselves are bad, I think Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs actually handled them pretty well. There's a leak in the boat! But in Sausage Party, they are so low effort, coming out of nowhere, and just feel forcefully inserted into the script. Spill the beans! Eh? Beans, I swear to fucking God if you don't- Alright, at one point in the film, they have the song I'd Do Anything For Love being played, and it's sung by a literal piece of meatloaf. I'll give them that one. But the food puns themselves, though bad, are inoffensive. Unlike, however... Yeah, so there's one thing this film loves, 
it's making as many stereotypes as possible and is probably what has caused this film to age the worst. And I say age, but this film only came out in 2016. And honestly by then I think this type of humour was kinda done. Like this feels like something that came out in the 90s or early 2000s. You have Mexican stereotypes, Chinese, Native American, the fact that the twink character and all the fruits are just homosexual stereotypes. Oh boy. But in all honesty, it's actually not the stereotyping that offends me. Though having the British people portrayed as teabags was definitely a step too far. Because at least the film tries to stereotype everyone. So in a weird sense, it's actually quite equal in that regard. What bothers me is the fact that a character's stereotype is also their entire personality. Even down to our main cast. We have the bagel who's Jewish, the tortilla who's Palestinian, so obviously they just have to hate each other. We have the taco whose pure gimmick is that she's a lesbian, and so spends the whole film making lesbian remarks. Hi, Santa Jimmy Chang. I promise to be a good taco. There's even a Stephen Hawking type character, which weirdly enough wasn't portrayed by a vegetable. Yeah, I know, I'm going to hell. But none of these characters actually have any depth to them. And I know other shows have done plenty of stereotype characters in the past, such as South Park, but at least South Park gives its characters a personality to go deeper than the surface level trait. But it's not even the stereotyping that is this film's main problem. And that instead is... The main problem with this film is it relies far too much on shock value as its main source of entertainment. And don't get me wrong, shock value can work, but you have to use it sparingly in order to keep the shock factor shocking. I get that this is what the main gimmick of the film is, cute Disney-like characters doing things they shouldn't be doing. But the film overplays its hand way too quickly, and the novelty very soon wears thin. In other words, Sausage Party blew its load too quickly. For example, the context of the film is that our characters are meant to be deeply religious figures, believing that if they live a life of purity, they will one day get chosen by the human gods to live in a life of eternal paradise. The problem is, our characters don't consistently act that way. One moment they're talking about, oh hey, do you think it would be cool if we just like, touch the tips of our fingers? Wouldn't that be wild? As if they're like incredibly sheltered beings. But then they also talk about how much they're wanting to bang each other, as if it was some kind of reddit chat. I can't wait to finally just get up in there. Just raw dog it. It just doesn't make sense from a narrative point. If the foods are meant to be living a life of purity to appease the gods, why are they so foul mouthed and dirty? Sure they may have these inner desires, but the point is that they should try to act as if they don't. I think Matt Stone and Trey Parker handle this much better in their musical, The Book of Mormon. Which is brilliant by the way, highly recommend checking it out if you can. Where we have a group of seemingly squeaky clean religious characters, but we soon see that they are all struggling with inner urges and desires, and are desperately trying to keep them suppressed. Even in the opening scene of Sausage Party, we get all the food items singing about their devotion to the gods and how worthy they're trying to be, yet at the same time, they are already swearing like sailors. We finally get to not to mention that the lyrics in the song really aren't subtle at all. We're super sure there's nothing shitty waiting for us in the great beyond. Where we're sure nothing bad happens to us. Again, going back to Matt Stone and Trey Parker, I think they handled this better with the South Park movie, where our characters also start off pure of heart with an opening song, but here they are actually shown to be innocent. And it's not until after they go and see the Terrence and Philip movie that they begin to swear and become corrupt. Sausage Party could have followed a similar formula, where it's not until our characters see the true horrors of the world that their morals begin to break down. Again, going back to South Park, the show which based itself on this whole innocent characters acting immoral, they even made an episode on swearing with It Hits the Fan in season 5, where the characters are amazed that the word shit will be said on a TV show and everyone is freaking out like it's the greatest thing ever. The TV executives catch on to this and keep trying to add more and more swearing to keep the hype going. But the characters soon find the novelty is wearing off and begin to get bored of it. Oh yeah? Well I don't really give a shit. You know that word's getting kind of old. It's not really funny anymore. That's pretty much what happens with Sausage Party. 
and let us not forget about the disastrous story itself. Because the film was so sure the edginess could carry it, there's practically no story here. It's just our characters splitting off into groups, which pretty much have the same events playing out. They realise everything is a lie, meet some stereotypes, and try to figure out what to do. The only aspect I actually liked in one of the stories is where our characters meet a human who can interact with them after getting high on bath salts. I thought this was a cool idea, and I thought it was going to be utilised in the final act, like maybe this human helps the food items escape the supermarket, but instead he's just randomly killed off and that's it. How they managed to find their way back to the store whilst carrying his severed head is never explained. I also nearly completely forgot about the film's villain, because he is just so forgettable in this. The entire gimmick of him is that he's an actual douche, he gets knocked out of a shopping trolley and blames our main characters for it, so is now hell bent on seeking revenge. But all he does is act as a background presence in order to get our characters to move from one location to another. He doesn't even get like a proper arc towards the end, and everything would have pretty much played out the same had he had not even existed. But for my final point, we now end with the bad, and go into the straight up what the fuck. Let's start with the one moment that everyone remembers from this film, and that's the, uh, how do I phrase it without getting banned? The fornication frenzy. I'm not even going to risk showing clips of this because I know YouTube will get upset. But if you've seen it, you know. And if you haven't seen it, well, just use your disgusting imagination. So having defeated the humans and now knowing there is no great beyond, the food items decide to do away with their religious followings and decide to have a massive gathering of some sort in order to celebrate this. Like I mentioned, I went to see this in cinemas, and honestly when this scene came on, I wasn't really watching it myself, but rather I was more fascinated at looking around to see other people's reactions. I remember seeing a lot of nervous smiles, some panic laughter, but I think my favourite was this middle aged woman who genuinely looked disgusted at what she was witnessing. The face she made is what made me laugh more than anything that this film tried to do. So I know I've mocked the film's attempt at trying to do shock value the whole way through, but this scene is the one time they actually nailed it. I just dread to think at how this scene came about in the writers room, with Seth Rogen and a bunch of writers getting stoned off their ass, with a table full of food items, and just trying to act out how this scene would go with various food products in front of them. Not to mention the poor animators who had to frame by frame animate this shit. But the weirdness doesn't end there, as perhaps arguably the even bigger mindfuck was the ending, where the food items learn that they're actually cartoons being played by actors, so they develop a portal to where I presume is the real world, head through it, and that's where the film cuts. What? I know this film has made very little sense throughout, but this really does come out of the blue. Maybe if they actually did go through the portal and witnessed or interacted with the real life cast, perhaps making some fourth wall commentary on the film's writing choices and how it made no sense, that could have maybe worked? Something similar to the Sonic for Hire web series finale? I don't know. But yeah, that's Sausage Party. A film that had great potential, but ultimately flopped in execution. Having rewatched it after all this time, I don't think I hate it as much as I used to, but I still can't find much enjoyment in it, and it still pains me to watch something that I knew could have been so much better. Weirdly enough though, despite all my criticisms, the film actually did do well at the box office, making over $140 million from its mere $90 million budget, but I just don't think its legacy really had that much impact. I said this in my last review, and I still stand by it. I think Sausage Party might have fared better had it come out 15 years earlier, back when it was still novel to have innocent characters, getting into messed up situations, maybe the film could have even earned a sort of cult status in that regard. But by 2016, it was something that had already been done to death. And let's face it, probably isn't something that would ever get made today. 